roll it. Oh, yeah. Two pre-rolls, including Nutrafol. Guys, we don't have to choose between hair growth and our health. Nutrafol's drug-free whole body approach promotes hair growth from within. No compromises, just better hair. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners two, $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. Enter the promo code JRVP. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men. Enter the promo code JRVP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code JRVP. The show is also sponsored by BetterHelp. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash JRVP today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash JRVP. Two pre-rolls. Just an amuse boost to Anthony and myself discussing uh, discussing <laughs> a disgusting pastor's cryptocurrency, meeting new friends, and not even feeling a bullet in your brain. All coming up in episode 232 of the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. And make sure you listen until the end when Greg will personally apologize for the Taylor Swift AI images. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to tell you, I'm shocked, uh, shocked by the NFL weekend. Um, I was really hoping for Lions Ravens. And again, I am from Pittsburgh. Uh, I do not root for the Ravens normally, but I think uh, Lamar Jackson is a total badass. And I was pulling for him despite the rivalry. Is your eye okay? No. But what happened? we could just, it's an audio medium, except for the YouTube subscribe. And, and the you Patreon. Can check out. Uh, I don't know. My contact just says crap in it and i have no no uh no backup plan so i just got to leave it there i'm not i'm not making fun of you i'm concerned yeah i'm worried about you but 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 it's it's okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna harp on it still look at me i'm not going to do that to you um i was i again i was very excited about uh not the chiefs again the chiefs their their biggest problem is they've been so successful they're boring now i don't want i don't want them there uh and i was really hoping for the lions i got on an airplane and the lines were up uh, big, mm. and I thought, okay, this is uh, this is going my way. I'm sorry the Ravens didn't pull it out, but at least I get the Lions, and then no. So I'm unhappy, but and I find myself in a weird position where I am now defending Taylor Swift from the masses. <laughs> I think it's wild, and I saw a tweet that said this: it's wild that a country music star is dating a white tight end from a Midwestern city's football team. He's like a future Hall of Famer, and people are mad. <laughs> like, you would think that this is like, this is like central casting scripted what these people who get mad about things like this would want. Yeah. Is a country music star dating a, uh, a football player on the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, country no, music star so feels a, a little outdated to describe her, but I, I hear what they're saying. Sure. It, it, it's odd. Uh, and again, I do not like her. I'm 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 anti in a in a very uh, uh, what would you call it? like I don't really care I don't care that much but I don't like her uh, but I think it's weird that everyone's so mad. Well, by everyone you mean like I don't know. It seems like a weirdly Republican political thing. Yes, which, that's, but, but but that's the corner that's very strange. Like oh you your your stance is like anti literally the most popular musician in the world and the most popular sport in our country which but I would is think like super red blooded I would think I they, love, they would love Taylor Swift it would be like if he was like, if, if uh, Travis Kelsey was like I like this gun I bought this new gun and everyone's like that's not the right gun we wanted you to get a different gun and so we're really mad about the gun you have it's, it's odd I do like the, the, the conspiracy theories that, uh, that he's going to get down on one knee at, uh, at they're, the Chiefs are going to win. He's yeah. going to get down on one knee with the Super Bowl trophy in one hand, the ring in the other, and they will have sex on the field. Okay, that's a conspiracy theory. I haven't heard that one yet. Like literally screaming out, we're going to Disneyland as they climax. <laughs> that's what I've heard. I don't know. I'm not, I don't work for the NFL like you do. 
for now. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything. Um, the conspiracy ideas are, are funny to me um, because, like, at what point can we just uh, call people stupid? You know, it's like, well, you can't, you can't, like, the conspiracy ideas that, like, wh what was the aim of the conspiracy, I guess, would be my question. To get clicks. I assume it's all very online. Let's get these clicks. No, no, no. I um, mean, but what would the aim of the NFL be through this conspiracy? I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing to gain. There's nothing to lose. It's just like, oh, we have something different today. It would be like if, if, like, if Greg's eye is, is acting <laughs> wonky on a podcast, I'm going to harp on it for that episode because it's different than what we normally get. You know, I'll tell you this right now. I'll, I'll be honest, Aaron. Yeah. If Taylor Swift was in the room right now, just sitting in the corner, we would pan to her. We would pan to her occasionally and yeah. see her reaction to the things I said. I'd stand up, walk over, and pan. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron has to physically pan. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not bothering anyone. I mean, we showed Tommy DeVito's parents about 15 times more per game that, than Taylor Swift. I think everyone uh, can handle it. I'd rather look at Taylor Swift. And again, I, it's the reaction she has. It's that, like, that big O face, that like, oh, my God. Like, she's never seen anything happen ever before. <laughs> That, that does annoy me, um, but I would rather see her all day than see um, that the, the agent, the, like the, the most Italian agent of all time. Tommy DeVito's agent? Yeah, Tommy DeVito's agent who like came off a of pizza box and, and, and walked it to the sidelines. They were showing him a lot, and that was annoying. Remember when, um, what's the, the quarterback from Notre Dame, Brady? Yeah, Brady Quinn. Brady Quinn's, his sister was married to... Like another player, I forget his name. It was name. A.J. Hawk, now was a, yeah. famous for having yes. zero reactions on the Pat Yes, Mac staring straight ahead. And she would wear the half jersey that was half Brady Quinn, half A.J. Hawk. And they panned to her every, after every play. And I hated that more than Taylor Swift. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of is, I don't know if you saw this clip, but Snoop Dogg was on the Pat McAfee show, decided to use that platform, that audience, to announce that he's been in, or just he was answering a question. It was the first time anyone had asked. He's in the studio right now with Dre working on like a follow-up to Doggy Style or whatever, like the first time they've worked together uh, in 20 years. And that to me was the ultimate test that AJ Hawk will have no reaction to anything. I can't imagine how pissed Snoop Dogg was. Like, this is pretty big news if in Snoop Dogg's world or in recording. And it got zero pop whatsoever. Like he brought it out and Hawk just, just sat there stone faced. I don't think Hawk can hear <laughs> what's happening. I don't think he can hear what's going on. I, I just, think he's just like waiting. It's like he's listening for things to edit later. Because I've never seen him do anything. I, I just imagine Snoop Dogg like throwing the headphones off afterwards and yelling at his PR agent and, and like, you told me to break this news on this podcast. I got nothing from this this meathead. Dre has been talking about <laughs> Snoop drops a new album like every couple of weeks and Dre's been talking about doing shit forever. It never happens. He just keeps on working out. I, uh, I, 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 I didn't really have any opinions on the Taylor Swift stuff other than like it's annoying that people are even annoyed or whatever. It's, it's not a big deal. It's like, just come down. Uh, but when they, were, when they were making out as the credits were rolling after the game and like you know, she's a very tall woman. And, and Travis Kelsey's like the perfect height for her just ahead. And it's like, it almost looked like that, uh, that famous night, like that 45 picture of the after uh, VJ day oh, in yeah, Times yeah. Square. I was like, well, this is pretty good. You can't, you can't write this stuff. Yeah. How about the NFL? And people are like, oh, that's why it's more popular than, than it's ever been. It's like, no, people just, watch, people just watch football. The 49ers Packers game had the highest viewership of all time. That did not involve uh, Taylor Swift. Here's, I'm going to give you my fix. For this, Greg, and you take it to Roger Goodell right after the podcast. While if it makes people so upset that while uh, Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey are kissing at any point on the field, that in the background we put Michael Sam and uh, his current boyfriend. I don't know if he ever got married to that guy, but Michael Sam and his boyfriend can kiss in the background of the picture. That way it kind of cancels it out. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember Michael Sam? I do remember Michael Sam, yes. Kissing his fiance at, on, at the draft and everyone losing their minds. <laughs> I, I do remember Michael Sam. I haven't uh, heard from him in a while. That would be good. They would have to, yeah, they, they could have a nice week in, in Vegas. They'd have to be on the field, I guess. Michael Sam's still working out. He's going to get on a team. He's going to show everybody. He's going to show them all. 
But yeah, get Michael Sam to kiss someone in the background of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey kissing, and then everyone's happy. You just reminded awesome. me what happened to Carl Nassib. Do you remember him too? Yeah, I think he's out of the league I think too. He, might be out, but he only article. had a few more years after that. Yeah. Yeah, he had a year or two. If he can kiss somebody, those two guys, if they, I'm not going to make them kiss each other. It's too far. Can, but, we, get, can we get Manti Teo kiss in the air? Oh, no, no, Manti Teo's been redeemed. <laughs> Manti Teo's been redeemed. He gets to kiss Michael Sam. <laughs> okay. Sure. Full circle. Um, Aaron, you got some news. I walked in. I walked into the studio today, and like the like a huge door was open, and everything's packed up. And I'm like, "What's going on?" And they told me that we're moving studios. This might be. This, we've got one more, I think, in this one, and then we're moving to the next one. Yeah. Okay. So ne- this week, listen. If you're watching on YouTube, which you should be, uh, that's the free Patreon. As far as I'm concerned, you can watch on YouTube. You can see the end of days for the studio that I railed against for so long until they finally fixed it. Not because I complained. But because Bill Burr was like, eh, maybe fix it. And then, uh, and now we're moving to a different one. It actually looks nice. It's nicer than this one. Wait, we'll how come you went be. over to see it? But I didn't. I, I, I know. Invited. They showed me a picture when I walked uh, in. And they just showed me, like, here's what it looks like. An artist here's rendering. Gonna be. Oh, that's a rendering? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. going to look nothing like that. But we're moving. And again, if you're on the Patreon, if you're on the Patreon, then you'll be able to see the studio next week. You don't have to wait two weeks. Okay, and that's how it's going to work. And again, people keep talking about the Patreon. I don't want to subscribe to the Patreon. I like my podcast for free. We do this podcast so that we can get every nickel and dime from our fans. I know you have more money. I want it all. Times are tough. Give me all your money. You don't have to subscribe to the Patreon. You can just go to the Patreon and leave a tip. Mm. We don't get any benefits but we get some of your money. I have enough money. I'm, I'm okay financially. Greg is okay financially, but we want your money. <laughs> when you agreed to be our fans, you signed a contract to give us all your money. Give it to us. Aaron, what's the address they can send their money to? <laughs> Don't, no more mail. Don't give it. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of mail. I did appreciate, though, Anthony, you agreeing that they have to clear everything out of here, obviously, so we have to get any, any of our stuff, blah, 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 that this place will be totally empty except we're leaving the words little picture behind. No. It'll just be, they, it'll just be here forever. He, told, he was like, hey, we've got a thing. We can make it so you can easily uh, customize you know, the, the background behind you. And I was like, we've got one picture of a dead author that I bought. We're putting that up, and that's it. That's all we're going to have. Maybe Nori. Now we have room for both. It's seaweed. Seaweed's picture. Seaweed Nori's and, still alive. Seaweed and, uh, and Wurzel okay. together, which will be amazing. I think we're going to double what we charge for the Patreon after that. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. Uh, my week, uh, I went to San Antonio, Houston, and Tulsa. It was fantastic. I had a blast this weekend. I know I've been complaining about mm. the prevalence of casinos early on in the tour. Uh, it was just, I had a, a great show in Boise, and then it was casino, casino. And again, they were good shows, but I, I, it's, it's a vibe in a casino. Uh, San Antonio, this theater was incredible. Uh, the theater was so beautiful. I loved that show. I was like, nothing's going to top this. It's the best show of the week. And then Houston was amazing. Houston was one of those venues where it's like, it's for music for sure. That I was like, oh, sometimes it doesn't translate. It was a great show. Hmm. I, I had so much fun in Houston. Gave me a big old belt buckle to, uh, to commemorate my sold out show, which I was happy about. I saw Dante Peduzzi. Really? Yeah, Dante Peduzzi, old school. Uh, he was uh, going to be a roommate of mine and Greg our senior year. He would have been junior. And Dante had to drop out. Dante didn't have the brain power <laughs> to, to be roommates with uh, Greg and myself, and he had texted me in saying... In fairness, Tulane is one of the most prestigious, difficult universities in the country. Greg and I were studying 24-7 <laughs> just to hold on by our fingernails. Uh, Dante could not make it to, to, our, to our, that year. He missed out on the fire, and uh, he had been texting me. I haven't seen him in forever, and I'm like, okay, we'll see. He comes backstage with his wife. And I'm like, so what's been going on? I haven't seen Dante in like 25 years. And he's like, oh, yeah, three kids. You know, the youngest is eight. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what I was expecting to come backstage, but not a, you know, a 40-some-year-old man with three kids. It, it's, I, I, th- I think of him as Dante Peduzzi. Because well, he's younger. From college, yeah. And he looks great. He looks, he looks kind of the same. Uh, but again, three kids. It was cool to catch up and, uh, and, uh, and see them. And hopefully, you know, I've got, you know, many, many months of touring. Hopefully I don't have to meet anybody else. <laughs> 
backstage, but it was great to uh, great to see Dante. You know what? Uh, what he was famous for in college? No, he was my little brother. In That's our, right. In our fraternity. I would say famous for that. I mean, sh- you know, burdened with that. one of the only um, people that might have been shorter than me. I don't remember that. So he really was like a little guy, and uh, I'm a I'm a great mentor. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of great life advice. Then I did a, uh, a casino in Tulsa. I love Oklahoma. I know I, I talked about moving to Oklahoma City until Liz was at the verge of tears, begging me not to leave Los Angeles. Uh, but I, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed being in Tulsa made me realize how great Oklahoma City is. I'll say that. But I'm a fan of Oklahoma. You guys are cool. This weekend, I'm headed to Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona for two shows in the round. Do, know this for a fact. I, I'm not going to enjoy being in the round, but I will make it fun. Do you do anything different? I do, well, you, you kind of turn in a circle as you're talking because you're like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, Nate Bargatze filmed his last special in the round in this theater. Tom Segura did it. Uh, I'm going to go do it. And I'm like, it'll be, it'll be interesting to be in the round, but I'm looking forward to those uh, two shows in Phoenix and then Desert Diamond Casino in Arizona. But this will be a fun weekend. I love Albuquerque. Uh, New Mexico are fun shows, and Phoenix is one of my favorite. Phoenix is one of the only cities I'm going back to that I went and did clubs, and now I'm going back to... Uh, to do uh, to do a, a couple shows in a theater that's going to be fun. Uh, Liz uh, left me after Tulsa did the Tulsa shows, and then she went to New York. I went back to L.A. Liz went to New York to go see the Madonna concert last night. She had bought tickets to see Madonna like forever ago, and then it got can- it got moved when she got sick, when Madonna almost died from being so old, and was like <laughs> she was so excited for the show. And she's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this work. She, she left Tulsa, went to New York. She's going to meet me in Albuquerque on Wednesday and get back on the tour. But she's been like, I'm not going to read anything about the tour. I don't want to know what the set list is. I don't want to know if she opens with like a prayer. I want to be going surprised. And I'm like, I, I support it. I haven't heard anything about the tour. And then on uh, like Saturday night, she's like, I can't resist. I'm going to read something about it and just see what I'm in for. And she goes down to this rabbit hole where every single person who's seen Madonna on tour is complaining to the point of like threatening oh, lawsuits no. because she's starting at like four hours late. Yeah, I can tell you that. Because every night she starts so late that people are like, we, I had to leave at 1 a.m. and she was halfway done. That Liz, I haven't talked to her since the show. I saw some pictures. She seemed like she had fun. But I thought it was very funny that she was like, oh no. Oh my God. I'm like, Liz, just go late. Yeah. You have an assigned seat. Go to the show two hours late and then it'll be fine. Yeah. I saw her at the forum and... uh Oh, you two, went two hours late. Yeah, this was two. before the pandemic. I heard two hours is like it, it was nothing. I read that book about Madonna. The the, the and like it, the last chapters are all these different tours she's done. And as it goes on and she gets older, they're always just later. Why and don't later they just uh, first of all her audience is getting later, so that doesn't make sense. Yeah, the people older. next to me were asleep. Yeah. Uh, second, just why not just schedule it later? You know, I guess it wouldn't matter for her. I I have friends. I have co work like. People that, like, no matter what you do to adjust the time, they're always going to be seven minutes late. Like, it just is impossible. And that's Madonna, but two hours late. union fees involved. Like, she's paying penalties like crazy. Like Blink-182 once said, I guess this is growing up. And now it's time for... <laughs> Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? <laughs> Greg's got a note. I do. Um, finally read the book that you never stopped talking about all last season. And once again, I, I'm happy to tell our listeners that Anthony came correct. Chain Gang All-Stars is a banger. His top two favorite books of the year, uh, The Beast Thing and Chain Gang All-Stars. I mean, they would be right up near the top of my, my favorite books of the year, too. Uh, so I, re- I really enjoyed that. And it, I was excited because I got all these... Uh, bracelets mm-hmm. with one of the catchphrases from the book uh, "Suck My Dick, America," and uh, yeah, if you're on the YouTube, you can see all the the bracelets I got. Now, and most of them don't say that. Some of them say different stuff. One says "Whoa, Nelly Furtado." One says "The Noid." One says "60 Percent G." I like that. But thank you for all the people who didn't forget me and really represented and got lots of uh, cool uh, bracelets, except for the person that sent "Turtle Killer." Uh, <laughs> To me, but I like the little turtle on that one too. I like Turtle Killer. What was it? There wasn't there was a there was like a, a green one that said like football is a thing. Football is a thing. Yeah, yeah these are only some of them. The ones that yeah. were easiest to put on. Some of them you had to 
do some things. Yeah, I, t- I went through all the bracelets. Or I, I, I miss Kim go through all the bracelets and uh, and and set them aside. We got like a pile for Liz. There were cu- there was one for Aaron. I'm wearing it right now. Aaron's Since wearing it right now. A uh, bunch for Greg, and then I, there was like a, a, I mean, guys, there were so many. There were so many bracelets. Uh, I again, I sent out the albums last week. I believe I saw someone online who's gotten their uh, their four albums. Uh, signed. I hope the people, the two people who were surprised by this, uh, were surprised. And I am also, I'm also wearing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how do I get them both on camera? To your right. Yeah, just move the other there direction. Go. There we go. I'm wearing. <laughs> this is, this is right now maybe a third of the bracelets I have on a tray beside me. This is all I could fit on my wrist right now. These are so many. I love them so much. Uh, the, the, you know what's not on here right now are the <laughs> ones that so won. Ridiculous. I'm having the ones that won resized a little bit, uh, tightened up a little bit, uh, so that I can wear them uh, on tour. But uh, thank you guys. I mean, for people without YouTube access, I would say you've roughly got a uh, hundred on on your two wrists right now. Yeah, something like that. It's it's a lot. I put on as many as I can, and I I, I love them so much. One says rum, rum, uh, Rummy the Korean Meat Factory Dog. There's a lot of suck my dick America. Some bones and all, but I love these. They will be used. They will be appreciated. Thank you so much. And then I got this one. This guy got, uh, this guy's one of the two surprises. He had his daughter record a little message for me. Uh, happy birthday, Anthony. Suck my dick, America. <laughs> That's great. If I can get that into the special, maybe watch through the end of the credits, I might have a little, I might have a little. Uh, happy birthday, Anthony. Suck my dick, America. You might get a little surprise at the end for your daughter. So when she grows up, you can be like, this is what I tried to provide you with. I mean, this is, um, no one's going to know that that's the line from the book. You know, a very uh, thought-provoking book, a book that was, like, nominated for, you know, National Book Award and stuff, Chain Gang All-Stars. So it mm-hmm. just sounds like it's a little girl saying, it's like my dick in I feel like when I wear just the one bracelet, you know, it doesn't stick out as much. Yes. But I feel like, and tell me if I'm wrong, when I wear it like this... It looks like I got in an accident and this is the tourniquet. I look <laughs> like I am trying to curse you. You look like a crazy person. Yes. I look like you're on the street in India and you tried to steal from me and now you, everyone's going to pay. It looks like the final fight in Kickboxer mm-hmm. when mm. they dip their hands in, in uh, glue and glass. That's right. Yeah. Or what do they dip their hands in in Hot Shots Part 2? Oh, fuck. Uh, is it chocolate syrup? It's honey chocolate syrup. <laughs> but like he puts, uh, he, yeah, he puts on some marshmallows and stuff. It's great. It kind of looks like <laughs> something maybe one of the um, characters in Chain Gang All Stars would wear in their fights. Maybe it'd be part of their their weapon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I read the book. <laughs> I uh, I would say for anyone that that is interested in this book, we have reached peak Anthony book. As I was reading this. I was like, well, no shit, Anthony recommended the hell out of this book. It is the most Anthony book I have ever read. Mm-hmm. No doubt. <laughs> it but, is like you can't, it's not going to be topped. Guys, I, I, read the <laughs> fucking book. If you, if you like me, if you're listening to this podcast, it's because you think I'm really funny and you like me and you want to hear what I have to say. Read the fucking book. <laughs> read it. Borrow it from someone. You have to buy and spend any money. Read the book. It's so great. And you can read it now. You can read it in 100 years. It's still going to be great. Read the book, Chain Gang All-Stars. Uh, audiobooks, by the way, are now like free if you have Spotify Premium for a certain amount, amount of hours a week. So I, so I read it, most of it, but I also listened to it, and the audiobook uh, was fantastic. And that was... Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Now it's time to take it down to a place that's drowning in bracelets. It's email corner. Email corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. 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 Emails. Emails. Email corner. corner. Emails. Emails. It's email corner. Guys, emails are a thing. All the Taylor Swifts in the world can't change that. Okay. All of the uh, complete and total meltdowns. By the Detroit Lions cannot change that. that sad. Emails are a thing. Well, who was in the Super Bowl last year? Kansas City and who? Uh, <laughs> why am I playing Eagles. the Eagles? Of course, the Eagles. That's right. I, for some reason, <laughs> I thought it was a rematch, and I was like, no, it's not. Jake but it was it a rematch of five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Different, different players. 
Different players. I, who are you pulling for? Chiefs, I guess, but I just don't. This was, if I could have picked like the matchup I wanted least, even when there were 14 teams less, yes. it was this one. Yes. So I think that the, I don't want to deal with a, an off season of like Brock Purdy discourse like winning the Super Bowl, so I'm going to go Chiefs. I have nothing against the Chiefs. It's just they've won a lot. But uh, at this point, you got to give it up to them. I would prefer to see Mr. Irrelevant win a Super Bowl. I think McCaffrey will be the MVP. I don't think they would even give it to Brock Purdy. But I would like to see them win over the shit we'd have to deal with with, with, right, that, with the Taylor Super Bowl. Oh. Taylor Bowl. Well, I mean, win, you know or, what? win or lose, you're losing. You're getting the same. You're getting some stories. It's the same thing. Remember Giselle after uh, Tom Brady? They lost in 2011. She was the original Taylor. My husband so cannot throw the ball. Like, yeah, but everyone <laughs> liked it when they cut to her. Everyone was very excited when they cut to Giselle. I'll never forget walking past her in the in the catacombs right after that Super Bowl, the, the night she did say that. And uh, she's a tall lady. She's very taller tall. than me. No. <laughs> like no way. Way taller. That's incredible. Um, Emails. JRVP. Guys, the guys <laughs> just to go back, they are a thing. JRVP, junior vice president at gmail.com. Please help us out because uh, this week's uh, emails were lacking. Really? Yeah. Miss Kim sent some. I was like... I was going to email her back and, and ask her, do we have more? Because uh, she included some from last week. I think she knew this week's batch were sloppy. So she included some leftovers. And there just wasn't a lot. People did give us some suggestions. I appreciated those okay. about what we could do while you're on your international tour. So we're going to take those suggestions for one more week. JRVP, Junior Vice President at gmail.com. But don't forget to send us some good questions because we need uh, some. You know what else I, I realized? I realized this last night because I've been talking last week. The, the, uh, the clip dropped yesterday of, uh, on the social media from the podcast of me announcing that I was going to Netflix for my special. Yes. And that, uh, again, I'm uh, recording it in April in, uh, in Milwaukee. You're looking at my hat right now. That's a brewer's hat, bro. Onwards toward Milwaukee. Aaron, say it. Towards Milwaukee. Towards Milwaukee. That's right. Uh, we're recording it in April, and I was saying it's going to be out in October. And then as I'm watching the clip, I had forgotten until just last night that the worst election of all time is coming down the pipe in 2024. And that I'm going to have to be doing promotion mm. for this when the world is burning. I di it did not occur to me. Well, I'm still going. I, you know what I thought would be a fun bit, a fun bit to do, is to pretend that I'm running for president. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean, Aaron? Get signs made up. Yeah. And have people pretend like they're voting for me. I whenever people do it, I'm delighted. I'm like, this is great. This is so great. It's such a fun bit. <laughs> Elections. Didn't someone do that, uh, uh, you know, the one that really boomed? Now I can't remember. Was it Ricky Rackman or one of the people on MVP and, uh, MTV, MTV back in the day? It wasn't Ricky Rackman. If it, was, if it was someone at MTV back in the day, it was definitely Ricky Rackman. <laughs> that fucking scamp. Definitely. But listen, I, hey, who, who, do you, who should my running mate be? Huh? Who should I get to be my running mate? Should it be Matt Reif? Oh. Vote. Of course. Go to the Patreon and vote. It'll charge you. And listen, it just it charge, it hit it twice. You won't be charged twice. You'll be charged three times. Anyway. Let's move on and, uh, and find these questions. The best of the bunch that I found. I'm really selling it today. Uh, Anthony Gregg and Aaron. This is Paul from Australia. Longtime listener, lover of the podcast. Uh, question for you, Anthony. Would you ever consider going on Neil Brennan's podcast, Blocks? Anyone's not familiar, Blocks is a podcast where... Neil Brennan interviews guests like many other formats, but they go a lot deeper than most. You get an insight into the psychological makeup of the guests. You're the type of comedian who doesn't ever let themselves be publicly vulnerable. This is why I chose this one. I like this little section. For your style of comedy, it works perfectly. You always seem to be one up on the subject you're making a joke about. However, another comedian who is similar in this way is Jimmy Carr. He recently went on, and it was fascinating to catch a rare glimpse of what makes him tick. I wonder if this is something you'd be interested in or if you'd be concerned it would break down a carefully constructed barrier that is vital to your com comedic career. Thanks, Paul. Okay, uh, listen. I, I, I know Neil Brennan. I've known Neil Brennan a long time. 
I like Neil Brennan as much as I can. I'll say no more. Okay. <laughs> I like him as anyone as, can. I like him as much as I can. Uh, why I would want to go on a po- and I didn't know. I've been invited to be on Blocks before, and I liked Neil Brennan's special Blocks. Yeah. I don't like a lot of specials. I liked Blocks. I have not told him that because I would not give him the satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been invited recently to appear on Blocks, and I said, listen, I like Neil, but unless I'm promoting my special, like, I don't need to go on podcasts now. If, if I'm going on a podcast, I'm going to promote something. All right. If I'm going to go try to promote our J- JRVP, the Jessel Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. I'll go on a podcast. I'm going for reasons. I'm not just usually, sometimes to hang. Like oh, Harlan Williams invited me. I was like, yeah, I'll go hang out with Harlan Williams for an hour. That was fun. But I, I, I want to avoid them unless I'm promoting either tour dates or a special. So I said maybe in the fall I, I would do it when I'm promoting the special. I want to do, I would try to do limited podcasts, but, you know, do ones that are going to be good. Um, I did not know it was about, you know, uh, let Neil Brennan open up the hood and tinker around inside my psyche for an hour. I, why would I want to do that? <laughs> Why would I want to? And listen, I've been vulnerable on podcasts. I've been open. I can be the persona. I can be my actual uh, real, uh, real life uh, human being self. But that sounds like, what am I getting out of it? What do I get out of it? Do, more people are going to see the special? I don't know. I think there are probably better things to do that it just seems like it just seems not worth it to me. So maybe I would, but probably not. And if I was going to do it, I would be like, let's just get this shit over with. I'm not going to enjoy it. I don't want, I don't want to have some, another comic tinkering around and be like, well, why do you think you feel like you need to do that? Were you bullied as a kid? Let's go back to your childhood. What's your dad like? Fuck out of here with that shit. I'd rather go on hot ones and throw up. Um, do you think there's any connection between breaking down the carefully constructed barrier that's vital to your comedic career? And uh, the spooky mental haunted hallways. Spooky mental haunted house <laughs> is what you're saying. Listen, you, if, if you turn the lights on in the spooky mental haunted house, it's just a mental haunted house. You need it to be spooky. Why would I want to get rid of the spooky? Right. Okay. Listen, you want to come to my spooky mental haunted house. You're excited. You want to come see a show. If you see the Ghostbusters car idling outside... And photon tasers going around inside the windows, it's less spooky. You're less incentivized to go. Two, two things here, Paul. Um, I know a podcast where Anthony uh, breaks down his carefully constructed barrier that's vital to his comedic career. It's called the Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. I mean, Send us more bracelets. I mean, how much more vulnerable do you want? This is, this is it. This is the real thing. Aaron, what's your home address? <laughs> <laughs> Not the other thing is you know you mentioned that uh that clip they sent out i gotta work on this because i i've been i've gotten this from a couple different friends now they they see you on tiktok and so then they see me on tiktok but i'm never i never actually speak in any of your clips you got to just get me out of your clips because i'm getting too many of like oh yeah i saw you on tick on tiktok with anthony but i'm just like but i didn't say anything right i'm just i'm just sitting there looking fucking goofy and and terrible under these lights like Hey, yeah, yeah, like, let's stop this. Okay, they're, I mean, they're doing that. They stopped doing the split screen. Now it's just kind of, they keep focused on me. Oh, really? They, they okay, that's good. Bit. So that they've but, taken my note. But now let's use this clip. Let's use Greg <laughs> complaining as the clip and see how, see how it does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice a, a week of... Uh, I'm not saying I media. want to be on the clip. I'm saying, like, take, take my image off the clip. I don't need to be there. That's all. Yeah, it's always is, just me is, looking like a dope. This is very true, but I like it. You pay, you, you pay for half of it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, Drew asks, Aaron, Anthony, Greg, and Miss Kim, has a friend ever introduced you to a friend of theirs only to discover that you like their friend more than you like the person who introduced you? Absol- absolutely. Um, absolutely. Aaron, has that ever happened to you? I got to think so. Probably. I just can't think of it. I was thinking, of, did you have any examples? I, that's why I thought this might be funny. I had one example of a uh, of like a friend, and we need to get into names because I, people listen to this podcast, where a friend of ours uh, introduces one of his friends. And at first we were like, oh, this guy is so cool. I could talk to this guy forever. This guy is so funny. He's got like, he talks about great books. He talks about fun philosophies. I was like, this guy is really cool. 
I kind of wish, uh, like he was my roommate. And then the next time I talked to him, I was like, I hate this person so much. So it was like, it was a quick, like, it was like a 24 mm. hour thing where I was like, oh no, like he just hadn't made a Do good first impression. Person? If we talked about it off the air, you would, you would remember what I'm talking about and you would agree with me. We all kind of felt the same and it wasn't like he did anything bad. It wasn't like he was like dropping racial slurs the next time. It was just like, oh, he's a little bit full of himself. Uh, what I had definitely done is I once like hired someone for a job and then totally regretted not it was like between two people and I hired one and then hung out with the other person and was like oh mm. you would have this would have been cool and what I remember what the first thing this made me think of is I once met a girl this was a long long time this is like 15 18 years ago I'm doing a show and I meet a girl after the show she's like that was so funny I'm like very new and she's like I just saw you that's amazing and she was very pretty she's like I'm an actress and we hung out one night and then she invites me to her place and she's like, she was very cute. And then I get into her place and her roommates were so fucking hot <laughs> that I was just like, oh man, I fucked this up. Like I, I, I hung out, they had like a game night and I was there and the roommates were just like gorgeous that I was just, I felt like I was sitting next to like, I mean, just a sack of fucking potatoes. <laughs> Jesus. And it was like, and it was all I could do to try to like, just get through the evening. And then I just left and never talked to anyone who was at that, at that party ever again. It was, it was very, uh, very funny. So this is, that's a ridiculous story. You know, what popped up in my head was, um, our friend from college who introduced us to his mom, who, um, yes. you know, L Linda, who then housed us when we first moved out to Los Angeles and was, we're trying to get an apartment for like three weeks. And you especially, but my, me as well, uh, became much better friends uh, with, with his mom uh, than we were with him. Yeah. I mean, she, like, I, she texted me on my birthday. We talked on my birthday to say, <laughs> hey, how's it going? I haven't talked to, to him in fucking I, in, in 20 years. Like, she told me he got married. And I was like, all right. <laughs> It was a good, uh, it was an early lesson. It was like, oh yeah, we're, it was almost like an introduction to adulthood. Like, oh yeah, we could, we could be m more friends with the, the mom at this point. We don't, it doesn't have to just be kids. I mean, I hope for it. I hope I hit things off with people, my friends' moms. And this just happened the one time. But yeah, it, that does happen. And again, I've, I've always just like tried to glaze over it and, uh, and not let it get in my head too much. But yeah, it happens. All right, a couple more. Uh, we got a special extra one. Love the pod, even Aaron. Whoa. I mean, Aaron tests very high with the focus groups. People love them. I'm based in Iowa in my 30s. Been a huge Jesselnik fan my whole life. Uh, over the past couple of years, I've enjoyed seeing his entire creative process play out for Bones at all. Various venues, blah, blah, blah. I've caught new nuances each time. He's seen you like five times. Uh, really appreciate the methodical approach behind the scenes insights. My question is, does Anthony have his original jokes concept, handwritten or otherwise, in some secure undisclosed location somewhere on planet Earth to be published upon his retirement or untimely demise? It's definitely going to be uh, an untimely demise. Uh, no, I do not. I, uh, I burn it all. I have no interest in any notes being found after I uh, after I'm gone. The only thing I've kept I've kept the set list I've had from the three roasts I did for Comedy Central, mm. the, like the pieces of paper that I walked up there with. And again, those aren't like I'm not making notes on that because I think those jokes are so locked in. But I remember my last uh, special, Fire in the Maternity Ward. I had kept my set list for every show of that tour. And as it changed, like I just like, like put them all down and then you could like scan through the document and see how it changed. And it was unrewarding. I was like, I just shouldn't have done this. Mm. But if I, I think I've talked about this before on the show that if I write jokes, I'm like writing subjects or something and I, and I write the joke and the joke's not good enough to go in my act, I get rid of the whole thing. I don't want to have notes I can go back to. I'd rather go if I think about the subject again and approach it from a new angle. If I have notes there, I'm locked into that. And I don't, I want all the old like, old sets of mine, I want those gone. I don't want the, I don't want these like old, uh, you know, my first ever set that's like in a videotape mm. somewhere out there. I want that, I don't want that to be, to mm. see the light of day. So, so no, I like the, I, I like when authors are like up on my death, burn everything. That's what we will do. And I think I talked about this, I've been thinking about this now, that I get a certain satisfaction after I film the special because then I know if I die, I have all my work out there. You know, if I die right now, if I died tonight, if I'm driving home tonight and I get in a car accident, this special is lost. And there's so, someone might have a video somewhere, a clip, and that'll end up becoming the thing, and I hate the idea of that. That once the special is recorded, I can die, and I will be happy. And then that'll start to go away. As I start to write more stuff, I want to get it out there. I'll be like, oh no, I gotta live for something. 
I got to live for bracelets. Mm. So, Rummy, no. Liz? No extra records. Mm. I don't want anyone to see my process. What about your godchildren, you know? I got nieces and nephews now. Your buddy on JRVP here? You think, you think you got something in the will? I, I'm not asking for anything in the will. I'm saying these are le- reasons to live. I'm not talking about the will. Yeah, I, listen, I, I enjoy life, but my fear is dying before a major artistic work is completed. You know, if I'm writing a novel, I want to finish the novel before I die. That, I think that's very normal. Uh, but, but, my, but my notes, my process, that will die with me. I'm happy to talk about it, but I do not want to provide evidence. Uh, so this, this last one uh, is a, a question that uh, Chris is asking. After seeing, uh, in last week's episode, we got a tiny peek at Aaron, but I think a lot of us have different images in our head of what he looks like. Yeah, unless you subscribe to the Patreon, then you can see it. But mm-hmm. should the fans send in drawings of what they think he looks like? Okay, I, I, I'm going to admit something here. I, uh, I, do, I did look at the Reddit this week. I dipped into the Reddit. I didn't read a lot of the comments, but I saw the, like, the headline things. And someone guessed, they were like, whenever Aaron's talk, this is what I've seen. And it was a picture of Al from Home Improvement. And I swear <laughs> to God, it made me laugh so hard because before I met Aaron, I thought that that's what I thought of of, uh, of Aaron as was Al from Home Improvement, and that's that's not a compliment. It's not an insult. It's just what I pictured in my head. And Aaron was fully down with uh, with a contest, not a contest, but just let's have some fun. I want you guys to draw what you think Aaron looks like, and I'll give you a, I'll, I'll tell you what my experience has been looking at Aaron. Aaron is mercurial. Mm. Looking at Aaron is like watching that part of the Michael Jackson black or white music video where they're morphing into each other, where it's like a guy with dreadlocks into like a redheaded white girl, you know, and they're doing that little dance with the shoulders. It's not really a dance. I'm black. Or white. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You, know, the, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. That's what Aaron's like looking at. He's just always shifting. I couldn't tell you what color he is. I can tell you it doesn't matter. If he's black or white. Thank you. But I don't know. So time. I would like love Gary, to he's see. He's like Gary Oldman, except his life is his role. Does he look like Ray Dong Chong's sister, as someone in that video does for a second? It's possible. Isn't Tyra Banks one of the people? Yeah, she was, I she think was, she, she is. I think Good call, Aaron. Yeah. Good call. Wait, where do they send these drawings, though? They, can, they-, they email it to JRVP, Junior Vice President, gmail.com. Put Aaron drawing in the subject. Miss Kim will not know what you were talking about. It'll weird her out, but it'll be fun for us. Put it in there and give us a digital drawing. Again, do not send these here. This place is for bracelets only. Mm -hmm. And if you want to put a drawing of Aaron on a bracelet, I'm not going to stop you. It's not illegal, but it's immoral. (laughs) So, yeah, let's see what you guys think Aaron looks like, and we'll show them on uh, the Patreon. Also, the fact that they got a peek at me last week is a surprise to me i was not aware well, yeah i, I don't even I, know how that I would thought work i got you down were, low enough to yeah you were crawling it. like anthony you don't know how cameras work hmm. anthony's like how do i get on the camera just look just that's it's facing you all i know Go is they better that. be pointed at me <laughs> and then we're going to get some money or some bracelets which are just as good as money <laughs> and that was email corner emails around the world Send me bracelets. You're good dad. And now it's time for ad copy. So I don't know if you know this, 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime. I know it. I'm I'm doing it. I would my shit was thick. My shit was thick as fuck. And now I'm 45. Up top, like it's thick all around. Up the that, that front part, hmm. it's getting a little thin. Hmm. I'm doing something about it with this stuff. It's normal. It doesn't have to be your fate. Get ahead of it, Anthony, with Nutrafol, a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over one million people seeking seeing thicker stronger faster growing hair with less shedding the less shedding is important you don't want to be just uh 
shedding all over the place. It's unsightly. It, it, your wife won't like it in the shower. Many of these supplements out there, they rely solely on ingredient studies. Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol's men's hair growth supplements. Uh, look, I'm, I've been on it. I'm doing it. I'm getting ahead of it. I said something about... Like a, you know, that's like a little bald and sp- bald spot ish in the back. And this guy, other guy at work who's totally bald is like, I don't want to hear it from you. I don't want to hear it. Look at that. Hey, th- this is how you stay ahead of the game. You don't want to become like that guy at work. I'll tell you what, when I'm looking at something to help my hair growth, I'm looking for efficacy. <laughs> and this stuff has got efficacy coming out the wazoo. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners. $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping. When you go to Nutrafol.com slash men, enter the promo code JRVP. You can find out why five, uh, why 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men. Enter the promo code JRVP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code JRVP. Don't hate, efficate. <laughs> you know what else uh, I wanted to talk about? BetterHelp. This show, it's sponsored uh, by BetterHelp Therapy. Look, it can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all your relationships. So it doesn't have to be with your parents. It doesn't have to be with your loved one. It could be with friends. It, you could be having a difficult relationship with someone at work. You could be have a hard time with your dog. It doesn't matter. It's always helpful to talk to someone. You don't have to do it every week. Do it every once in a while. It's good for you. Not everyone has the resources to go down to an office and sit there. This makes it easy. You want to dip your toe into therapy? This is a way to do it. This is like the open mic, you know? (laughs) You can go and try it out. You don't like the person, find a new one. It is helpful. It is a resource we are telling you about efficacy. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You get a, a brief questionnaire, and then you matched up with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. That's Visit BetterHelp.com slash JRVP today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash JRVP. And that was Ad Copy. Let's get to headlines. <laughs> Shout out, sorry to the other two sponsors tonight that we canceled so that we could talk more about bracelets. <laughs> a pastor in Denver who said that God told him to sell cryptocurrency is facing civil charges along with his wife for marketing a digital coin that prosecutors said was practically worthless and using the proceeds of uh, these coins he was selling to support a lavish lifestyle. Yes, but the headline is, what's the what's the best part of this? Uh, let me what look. Did he, what did he say? Was I mean, it, what's his I have my own little uh, pastor charged with cryptocurrency fraud, and he t- he said that God told him to do so it. So God told him to do it. Listen, when pastors get caught for anything, it's the funniest shit of all time, every time, because they're never like, "You're right, I was wrong. You're right, I I did a bad thing." They always have this like righteous. Righteous gemstones, fire inside, they come out with. I remember one, there was a guy who was like a mega church pastor, and he got caught with like a bunch of meth and a male prostitute. And then he like gets caught, and then that Sunday he goes in, and he gives the guys at the pulpit, and he's screaming, and he's like, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I, I've got all these different things to say, I've got all these different things to say to defend myself, and I haven't even started yet. And the place is like, woo, and then you never see him again. He goes immediately to jail. <laughs> They're always like so hardcore of like, yes, I did this thing. I scammed my parishioners out of their money, which is different than how other churches do it because there were NFTs involved. Mm. Speaking of which. Yeah. I forgot to announce the JRVP NFT. Ooh. JR NFT? No, JRVP NFT, <laughs> where you give us money and then you can listen to the podcast. <laughs> 
But this guy is selling NFTs, saying God told him to do it. It's great. He's going to go to jail for a long, long time. He will never admit fault, even though the people who belong to that church should string him up mm. and murder him. But again, if you were at a church and your pastor is telling you to buy his NFT. Cryptocurrency, his not crypt- NFT. His, whatever. His cryptocurrency, same difference. One of them you look at and the other one you don't. Otherwise, they're the same. If you're buying that from your pastor, you're wrong. Yeah, he sold Index Coin, INDX, uh, in Denver, raised nearly $3.2 million, uh, used most two. of it. Yeah, he did pretty, pretty well for him and his wife. They said the, uh, the prosecutors said he pocketed about $1.4 million. He actually paid the IRS, which I'm amazed, uh, half a million dollars, like he tried to make it all make it, make legal it yeah god probably told him to do that <laughs> and uh spent some on a home remodel but i love uh, one of his explanations mr regalado uh he said one of two things happened and this was in a video message on the website for his church which i tried to sign into to watch the video and you need a password couldn't do it but the new york times did uh take some quotes down they got in he said one of two things happened one, either I misheard God and every one of you who prayed and came in, you as well. Or two, God is still not done with this project and he's going to do a new thing. I love it. <laughs> I love the idea that maybe you misheard God. <laughs> that God was talking fast. God was doing a couple different things at once. I was busy while I was listening to God. Maybe he said something else. I word to the fact that God's not done. This, this is how God works. You, you get a lot of money, you get into trouble for stealing the money, and then God shows up, and you go direct to heaven. Direct. And he also warned um, the people watching the video to not take their anger out on the lawyers and the government who is coming after him, which I am guessing he wouldn't warn them if that didn't already start to happen, that, mm-hmm. that they were getting some pushback. He said they have to do this. Look at it like this. We sold the cryptocurrency with no clear exit. We did. We took God at his word and sold the cryptocurrency with no clear exit. He's calling God a fucking liar. He's calling <laughs> on God. And, and pastors can't do this. I, it, wasn't there a story, Aaron, back me up on this. Wasn't, didn't Jesus go into a temple and see people selling stuff and start flipping the fuck out? Yeah. Isn't it the one time Jesus loses his temper in the whole goddamn book is when he sees people selling stuff in, in the, in the uh, Etsy? Yeah, yeah. So you knew. You knew this was bad. The people who lost their money, you deserve to lose your money. The guy who took the money, you deserve to go to jail. And you'll be running shit in there. People love their religion. God told me to do it. Maybe I misheard him. (laughs) But I gotta listen. It was garbled. I was, God told someone and then someone told me and maybe things got lost in translation. It's a game of telephone with God. It always is. Passenger who is aggressively farting while waiting for the, for a plane to take off recently, an American Airlines fight, flight in Phoenix, uh, farted so much that the plane had to turn around while it was getting ready to take off. When you say aggressively farting, does that mean that like he was just he was doing it like I mean, if I think aggressive farting, yeah. like regular farting is like Aaron just letting it go throughout the day. If I'm like Aaron, you're farting too much and you're like, oh, yeah. And then you start double farting. That's aggressive. Farting. That's exactly yeah. what it was. aggressive is someone. Hey, sir, this is too much. And he's like doing it more to yes. be a dick. So he, it, that is exactly what happened to some other people sitting near him. Was like, what's up, man? Like start fart. Stop farting. And he was like, oh, you thought that would, was rude? How about this? And, uh, you know, started like kind of yelling about it. Uh, he also, at one point, yeah, purposefully farted. And then, and this was caught on a, on a phone, said, yeah, everybody, let's just eat the smelliest food possible all at the same time. So he just, he tried to make it a whole thing. Uh, and people weren't happy. Yeah, it's, it, that's 100% attitude. You got to get off the plane. I would have been like, let's, let's fucking take off and then get him out of here. Let's chuck him out because if you get on a plane and you fart and people are like, oh, that's bad. And you're like, listen, I'm so sorry. This is the worst day of my life. Like, I'm so embarrassed, you guys. Like, something's wrong. I've just, I've got to get home. Like, I'm so, I, I apologize. If there's anything I can do. Like, I'm sorry. 
everyone would have said okay and dealt with it. But if you're like, fuck you, you think that was bad? Pull my finger, get off the plane forever. You're worse than the hijackers on the 11th. Mm. Why is that? Because they weren't farting. <laughs> you go back. But because people were there that day, cell phone footage, no farting. They were aggressive in other ways, granted, but they weren't like obnoxious about it. Yeah, you know what that movie, like United 91, 93, 93 mm-hmm. didn't have in it? Farting. If you, I mean, the, the original cut, I've heard, <laughs> they were like, hey, it kind of undercuts what we're going for here if you have all the farts. It's kind of like the cat's butthole yeah, the cut. butthole cut, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Aaron. What's the cat's butthole cut? We t- uh, do you remember remember the movie Cats we saw? Yes. Well, they were they were talking oh, about yeah, how the yeah, digital yeah. No, people were overworked, it, yeah. and at one it. point they were like, "These cats all have buttholes. We have to go through <laughs> and take out the buttholes." Yeah, I would love to see the butthole cut. I would like to see a cut of United ninety three with farts. Mm. We've, Get see, on we've seen that. two movies in our friendship on Christmas Day together. Number one was Cats. Mm-hmm. Number two was Zone of, Interest. Zone of Interest. I'm very yeah just excited about what's what's going to be number three to finish that trilogy i was thinking about zone of interest quite a bit uh, recently I yeah could, i could think of it. it's, a, it's a uh it's a thinker and i still haven't seen american fiction i gotta uh, i gotta check it out i did i put on aquaman i was so i got home sunday i'm by myself i'm so tired i'm just exhausted rummy's exhausted he was he was on vacation this weekend so he was all running around and we just crashed on the couch and i'm like football's over i need something i put on aquaman in the last last kingdom lost kingdom Possibly the worst movie I've ever seen. Wow. I have heard that. But it was so bad that I could not believe it. And I, I liked the first one. Mm. I did. I hated, I hated this. I hated it so much. You know what else I'm watching right now? Traders. Aaron, you watch Traders? I know Greg doesn't. No. The American version? Yes. Because I, I follow enough people on, uh, on tennis Twitter. It tends to be uh, an international crew. And they talk shit on the American version. But all they ever fucking talk about is the UK and uh, Australian version. I'm sure. said they were bit, way I'm better. sure. I've been watching this, the only season two of this new version. I'm very into it. I, it the people make me so mad how dumb they are. Dan Giesling would have been my first, the first throat I cut. I would, have, I would have seen Dan Giesling on the cast list and taken him out. He's clearly a traitor. Mm-hmm. You, he, that, he was put on this earth to be a traitor. I know, I know Dan Giesling from the Big Brother days. I can't believe he's still there, but I'm enjoying traitors. Excessive farting? Nope. A 21-year-old man in Brazil partied for four days straight over the New Year's holiday this year after getting shot in the head. He was bleeding profusely at the time after getting shot in the head. He thought someone had just hit him with a rock, and then he just kept motoring because that's what you do. It took four days uh, till he realized something was more seriously wrong, went to a hospital, and a CAT scan revealed that there was a bullet in his brain. And he's alive. He's alive in his head. Are they insinuating that the bullet like supercharged him? <laughs> that it was like a Red Bull? Kind the headline of thing? seemed a little uh, much. They said partied for four days. I mean, he went to work at, at some point in this. Like he just kept partying, went out that night, um, felt all fucked up. Uh, but uh, yeah, like he kept he kept living. I don't think it supercharged him. I believe that you can. Like I've seen uh, like a cop show. I remember this one episode. It was a beautifully done episode. I forget what the show was called. But a guy, there's like a shooting, and the guy's just a witness, and then he's just sitting there talking to the cop. They realize that he's been shot in the head. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even feel it. But like, oh, let's take you in, and then he ends up, his brain swells, he dies by the end of the, it's heartbreaking. But I can see, you can get shot in the head and not really know. Uh, but to like, I would like, the, if he was like about to get ready for bed, and then was like, what? And then just went out and started partying. Was like going out and banging on doors, being like, we gotta go right now. Something's up. We gotta party. <laughs> Like, what, what about getting shot in the head turns you into Spuds McKenzie? I think it's more like this guy um, already was Spuds McKenzie, mm-hmm. and then the, the bullet just, like, I don't know. It brings it out of you even more. If, you, if, you, if you're Spuds McKenzie already and you get shot, no noticeable side effects. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, you're the same. If you're not Spuds McKenzie, it could kill you. 
You know what I liked about Spud Bukendi? He always got the girls. Like the girls liked being around that that dog. Yeah, not like those other mascots <laughs> that were just beating the shit out of women left and right. We miss you, Spuds. We miss you. He was on a surfboard. <laughs> I think of Slurms. I think of Slurms from what show, Aaron? I don't know. Slurms was the Spuds McKenzie of the Futurama world. He was a slug. Wow. Who never stopped partying. Uh, and he was, uh, he was a tragic figure. Mm. A tragic figure, Slurms. Well, so was Spuds. Uh, you remember how he died? In a dog way? No, they just they shot him in the head. They <laughs> shot him in the, the head? Because he, yeah. he stopped partying? <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I got to take a nap. And they're like, yeah, take a nap forever. Look at the bunnies, George. Our uh, final headline is about a boyfriend who was arrested in India this week for dressing in drag so that he could pretend to be his girlfriend in order to help her pass a uh, professional exam, like a healthcare uh, worker exam that they take there. Um, What you call a crime, I call like romantic. So was he already a healthcare worker? Or was he, was he like, I'm going to study for this so you can go be a nurse? It didn't say. He must be a- an expert enough on this that he had some confidence. Uh, but my favorite part of the story is he didn't pass the test. He didn't? <laughs> they put that at the very end of the article. I was like, I would be leading with that. I would be leading that he didn't pass the test. So anyways. How, so, so they, but he, he is getting arrested. So he did. So th- how did they catch him? Was it in the moment? And then like they went back and looked at the test anyway? Okay, so like, let's let's show some uh, photos. Because I've seen the picture. Okay, yeah. We, we have the picture of uh, of the guy who, you know, I don't know. Believable it's, enough. The, 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 what's funny is that he did the bare minimum and then was just hoping. Like, that's some lipstick, a hat, and I assume the dot is, is the dot a, I don't know the term for it. A bin, is, bindi. Is yeah. that what he looks like or he put that on to be like, I'm a girl? Uh, yeah, only women would wear it. Okay. Yeah, she, yeah, she had that too. I, didn't put, I decided not to put her picture up, but, you know, it doesn't really look that much like him. But they actually went pretty next level. We also have the ID that he made up. Like, they had, they had to do things. He had to show a fake ID, and they actually made a fake ID with his fake picture on it, which, you know, he, he tried. Um, but they, you know, went as far to, like, check... Um, some of the records. I forget what it was that um, made them seem um, suspicious, but they went back and checked, and it just didn't match up with like her original, fi- you know, applications sure. and everything. It's. I mean, it's it's incredible to me that he would fuck this up. Like, if you're going to go and do it, you better pass. You yes. better do better than she would have done. I wonder if this was her idea or his. Was mm. she like, I'm stressed out, and he's like, Baby, don't worry, I'll take care of it for you. I've got an idea. Or was yes. she like, hey, you're better at this than me. I need you to go and take this exam. I mean, I, I think he, he volunteered to do it. She had already failed once, I think. And so okay. she was going back for a second time. They they came up with the, you know, this plan. Uh, I guess it was they have to run the biometrics. What are bi- I don't even know what biometrics are. Just like, uh, like blood tests and stuff. Fingerprints. Uh, fingerprints. <laughs> fingerprints, urine sample, <laughs> sperm sample. Uh, you mix those up. And then you smear it on an iPad and it tells you who you are and if you are your girlfriend. And if they, if they catch you, then you don't get to be a nurse in India. Maybe just don't get into healthcare if you have to cheat on the test. To be, or is it about placement? You know, if that, if that, then I can see you cheating if you're like, hey, listen, we're all doctors here, but I want to be, I want to go to the good hospital. Mm. Maybe I'll send in someone who... And if, if, you're, if your boyfriend or your girlfriend looks that much like you that you can pull this off, break up. Mm. <laughs> it's a fair point. Although there are some couples where they look similar. They should and, break up. But they're, but they're kind of cute. They should break up. You can be cute. You just can't look alike. It's gross to look alike. Yeah. Okay. Like Greg went to a different country to make sure he didn't look like <laughs> his partner. I, arresting feels and yeah he's being tried and everything on these charges um, for forging documents and all sorts of things this you does should. this does feel like though uh, the this being uh, becoming news is punishment enough that's enough that we're talking about it on the Jessel Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project Chair VP 
junior vice president. That's your sentence. We're big in India. Everyone in India, know, if you didn't know about this before, you know about it now. We are big in India. I want to do a show in India. Proved to you how big I am. Maybe I show up. Maybe it's Liz. <laughs> You're not going to know. <laughs> You're not going to know until you run the biometrics. Because that's how we do things. Just don't be a doctor. Just don't be a doctor. But I do understand the, the desire to cheat in a test like this. It's high pressure. I don't know if you remember this. In my uh, freshman or sophomore year of college, maybe sophomore year, I took a calculus class, intro to calculus. And every, I had a quiz every week. And every week I would email the TA and I would say, hey, uh, I've got to work today. I can't make the quiz. Can I make it up? And she'd say, I'll leave it for you in the room. And I would take the quiz, go over to Steve Mercado's house, who was an engineering major. It, and this was basic calculus. So he would just do it in five seconds. And then I would take it in and turn it in. Got an A on every quiz. And then the final was multiple choice. I copied off the person next to me and got a B in calculus. Congratulations. You're welcome. Love you, Mercado. You're welcome. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And now it's time for <laughs> choo -choo. Recommendation Station. Greg, you want to go first this week? Sure. I will uh, recommend a book. It is a collection of short stories. It is called Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. Uh, I think it was nominated for the Booker a couple of years ago. Uh, I would classify it as horror, I guess. Horror adjacent. All these stories, and it's one of my favorite short story books I've read in a while. This is one that I think, Anthony, you would like. Um, all the stories have like a, a nasty little twist to it. Like, I, I'm not giving anything away, but there's there's a story in the aftermath of an accident uh, from the perspective of someone that was in it that is as haunting as any short story I've ever read. Name, name it's called again? Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. The first the first story again, I'm not giving anything away, is about um, a, something that comes out of the toilet that is essentially made out of your uh, out of your defecation. Uh, it, 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 they are bizarre stories. Like a, a woman, <laughs> uh, like a man discovers this fox with golden blood and he begins to harvest it from like children in the air. It is completely batshit stories and yet they're amazing. How are these things not spoilers? They're not because they're like the beginning of how each. Are these, they're, how are these things? It's, they're not like reveals. It's like that's the premise of the story and then you're like, how is that the Listen. premise? And then it goes from there. It is great. Uh, Cursed Bunny. Bora Chung, if you're into some kind of short story horror. It's been bought. I am going to read it next. Wow. I'm reading uh, I'm reading Pride and Preju Prejudice right now, and I'm not loving it. Hmm. I, it feels like homework right now. And again, mm. I'm almost at the 100-page 100, 100 mark. I'm sure I'll get more into it. It just seems like they call everyone Miss, and it's like they got a whole bunch of sisters, and they're all worried about it. It's, 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 I, I believe it's going to be great, but I have not been enjoying it the way that I enjoyed the Brothers Karamazov. My recommendation this week, I, I read this book at the end of last year. I got an advanced copy, and I wanted to wait to pump it up until it just got released. Uh, Dan Jones, author of one of my favorite books of last year, it was called Essex Dogs. It was about a bunch of like badass dudes going to fight in the Hundred Years' War and getting into some shit in France, and it was awesome. And then the second one came out as a trilogy. Book two came out uh, this week. It's called Wolves of Winter. It's, again, it's a sequel, the second in the trilogy to Essex Dogs, Wolves of Winter by Dan Jones. Further's a story just as good. Again, I just like hearing these people talk to each other. The way the characters talk in this book is so fucking badass. It is awesome. Dan Jones, Wolves of Winter. It's book two in Essex Dogs. I, I recommend reading Essex Dogs first. Be you get the characters, but it's just fun to read. You want to spend time with these people. Wolves of Winter, Dan Jones. Dan, if the third book comes out this year, I'm going to be asking for that advanced copy. I'm going to be demanding it. I'm going to read it immediately, and then I'm going to sell a billion, billion of them. A billion of them. Get me, get me a quote in that book. Maybe, like, suck my dick, Paris, and we'll make some bracelets. <laughs> like my boy Nana. Uh, um, Aaron, you got anything to recommend? Sure. Uh, there's a game show on Fox called The Floor, hosted by Rob Lowe, of all people. Rob Lowe will take any job. but He will do anything for money. He's that really good, though. He's really good at it. He's, he is charming, of course. Of course. Uh, but it's a it's basic premise of the show is a, there's a, a big floor space in front of him. There's 100 people occupying a little square on it. And for every person uh, you challenge... 
you get to occupy their space and the person with the most space at the end wins and uh it's just gotten really good there's a couple people with some giant swaths of land and and uh people have specialties that they're allegedly good at but they they sometimes get beat uh it's really fun watch the youtube to see the look on my face doing what aaron just said go to the youtube and look at it and then draw what you think aaron looks like while he said that to me <laughs> <laughs> and that was Choo-choo. recommendation station you know what instead of instead of debbie or walker i got a special guest to get us out of here tonight we'll see you next week kids <laughs> we don't get the song we need the song too I will still have Walker or Debbie on it though <laughs> <laughs> best ending ever <laughs>